that's the latest Wes Anderson film. What with us being large, wet, um, large, big, big, large, great. Look, I'm overweight. Yes. There's no need to rub it in. We're Wes Anderson fans is what I'm trying and failing to say despite it being an incredibly simple sentence. <laughs> yes, so Isle of Dogs. How to say this? So it's in a far-ish flung future Japan in uh, Megasaki City, which is run by a totalitarian mayor, Kobayashi, who is part of a dynasty of cat-loving, dog-hating authority figures who has, for reasons not particularly well explained, um, joined or, or, or at all, has, has joined the cabal of similarly cat-loving authority figures to whip up a conspiracy to have people in the city dislike dogs, as it's revealed by by afflicting the canine population with various diseases and and that <laughs> and stuff for some reason, and then creating a, a wave of outrage against this, which he uses in order to round up all dogs and cart them off to Trash Island, an aptly named island which is full of trash. The film's narrative hinges upon his ward, Atari, taking off in a plane and crashing on Trash Island in a desperate attempt to find his beloved uh, guard dog, Spot? Yes, yes Spot. Spots. That was the one. Uh, and, and the film follows him and a, a pack of dogs voiced by the likes of Brian Cranston, Bill Murray, Jeff Goldblum, Bob Balaban and Ed Norton to try and help him get his dog back. And along the way, they will uncover these, this conspiracy and expose it to a nation for who I suppose would be grateful, although we don't really get to see that. <laughs> um, so I suppose that's the, that's the rough setup. It is absolutely charming. In common with pretty much everything Wes Anderson's done, I mean, obviously this is closer in visual tone and general concept to the Fantastic Mr. Fox than anything else. But uh, for my money, it's uh, quite a lot better than Fantastic Mr. Fox. Mm. I know a lot of people really like Fantastic Mr. Fox. I just thought it was okay. And I've never really went back to watch it again or anything like that. But this is utterly charming. And I suppose not just because it's uh, got dogs in it and dogs are better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's all, it's all just really charming. There's lots of really interesting to- touches. Uh, a number of different styles of animation, you know, the stop motion stuff and uh, actual uh, you know, cartoon animation, that kind of thing. Uh, some really interesting design choices, particularly audio wise, where uh, the dogs can speak in English, but um, a lot of the but the the Japanese people a lot of the time haven't been translated. There's no subtitles for them, so you're kind of left a bit guessing. Is there's lots of interesting choices. How Wes Anderson is that though? Because it begins with that title card of um, <laughs> yes. that the dogs can't understand everything. Basically, and saying that the humans are interpreted by translator um, mechanical means and high school students, yeah. whereas all dog barks have been translated to English. <laughs> mm. <laughs> a strange disclaimer, and one that is not needed on a great number of films. Um, <laughs> I'm not altogether sure what to say about it, only I've actually watched this yesterday, so it's not really sunk in all that much, other than I just heartily enjoyed it. It's, <laughs> you've got to break out the whimsy word again. Um, it's, it's certainly incredibly whimsical, but I think this is far more forgivable in this sort of uh, style of animation than, I think, for most people, uh, than it would be on something like the live action stuff like Grand Budapest Hotel. Now, I absolutely love all of Wed Hansen's films, no matter how daft they get, but I know a lot <laughs> of people get turned off by that level of um, sort of slightly weird, saccharine-ish, whimsical nonsense, but I love it. <laughs> and uh, I think most people should find it that it works far better in the, this kind of format than anything else. It's often quite funny. It's very got quite a dry sense of humour, I think, for most of it. It's yes. not being particularly broad. There's no real laugh out loud moments. There's no comedy pratfalls for the most part that I can remember. Um, it's just really beautifully done. It's beautifully pitched. I thought it was great. Yeah, it's strange that it is this incredibly whimsical, incredibly Wes Anderson y Wes Anderson film <laughs> that can only have come from Wes Anderson. Yeah. And from the opening scene, you know it's a Wes Anderson film if, if you didn't know that already. Yeah. Again, for me, positive and nothing but a positive Mm. it is i don't know it's strange most wes anderson films are in one way throwaway they they don't i mean you could read things into certain parts of them certainly but they tend not to have a lot of meaning no they're they're well crafted Uh, cupcakes there's a lot of frosting and a lot of substance yeah yeah, the, the things you enjoy for what they are without reading much into them 
and that's great. And I've enjoyed every Wes Anderson film I've seen, which is all of them. So that's a pretty astonishing hit rate, quite frankly. Mm. Uh, to quickly touch on Fantastic Mr. Fox, it was perhaps the one that I enjoyed least first time around. Right. I was felt left reasonably cold by that. I have mm. gone back to revisit that since so and like it a great deal more now. Okay. But this I liked instantly. Uh, I was so thoroughly entertained by all of it. I laughed so much during it. Mm. And yeah, really dry sense of humour, really appealing to me. But as I was saying about, you know, Wes Anderson things being, yeah, light and fluffy confections for the most part. Uh, yeah. It's about, you know, quirky characters and kind of silly dialogue and kind of almost breaking the fourth wall sometimes and then just kind of their yarns a lot of the time as mm. as films whereas this has a holocaust metaphor in it yeah. um or allegory at least and like yeah the, what what is this <laughs> doing in there it, it feels so out of place and it's so strange it doesn't really take away from the film because i enjoyed the rest of it so much but it's the one thing it's like yeah when this is this isn't even pretending by the end of it. It's like, the, the, that's the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. At least a Holocaust. You know, it's genocide that's been talked about in the end. And yeah, I mean, there's one step away from the canister saying Zyklon B on it. Yeah. It's, it's that close. Like, this this is strange. It's perhaps the one thing I'd take out because it's, I know it's a large part of the plot and the plot builds to that, but it when it got to the end, it just it seems so extreme. It's like, am I still watching a Wes Anderson film? Did they change director midway through <laughs> or something? But I still thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the performances are great. It is... Yeah, all I can say though is if you like Wes Anderson films, I think there's a very good chance you're going to like this. If you don't like Wes Anderson, then really, give it a body swerve because it's the most Wes anderson -y Wes Anderson thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, yeah, a film with a... It's not the only film I've seen with a stop-motion kidney transplant uh, <laughs> put in it. Yeah, some really curious choice. You know, stop motion animation is obviously it's composited computer nowadays. But still, there's a lot of work goes into the maquettes and 